Hey fellow Thunderstarts, I hope all is well. Is the one-handed backhand experiencing a slow death? That's the headline I wrote on TennisNerd.net. I got a pretty good or at least a lot of replies to it. I wouldn't say it's a good reception because most people seem to agree. Some went even further and said that tennis is uh, struggling and uh, you know going away because of the slower courts and the lack of contrasts and stuff. Sounds a bit like maybe an older guy argument, but I, I understand the point behind that. So uh, is the one-handed backhand going away? I went and looked at the world top 150 players because I needed to go outside the top 100 a little bit to find a bunch more. But in the top 100, there are fewer than 10 or around 10 one-handed backhand players on the men's side. The women's side was never as popular with the one-handed backhand. They still had a few more than they have now. Now I think it's about two or something like that. So I made a list not containing that many players. I mentioned Musetti, Shapovalov, Tsitsipas, Eubanks, Altmaier, Lajovic, Vavrinka, Team, and Evans. Thanks to you who commented and corrected some of these uh, and added players because I was uh, a little bit off. Uh, there were more players than that. But And I mentioned Diane Perry on the women's side with that beautiful one-handed backhand. And I talked about how difficult it is with the one-handed backhand to defend when you're getting these high balls. I watched last year the match between Alcaraz and Shapovalov, thanks to Adidas actually, who invited to that event. And so I watched the French Open, Alcaraz, Shapovalov, and it was clear that uh, Alcaraz was just hitting with such heavy spin and pace, of course, against Chapo's backhand. And Chapo's backhand is not bad, as you know, it's, it's one of the, the more powerful and, and successful one-handed backhands on tour. But he was struggling with that high, uh, loopy topspin on his backhand. And maybe the most famous example is the Rafa Roger rivalry, which Fed in the end seemed to be able to change a bit. He was more aggressive, took the ball earlier, had a bigger head size racket, so he had a little bit better stability and didn't shank as much and he managed to um, I wouldn't say turn it around but he at least corrected the numbers a bit and uh, he looked very good in doing so because it was a pretty difficult challenge with Rafa's massive topspin kicking up especially on clay uh, but also on other courts on Roger's backhand over and over again he may have left the ball short he couldn't really attack he had to run around and open the court to the other side and nowadays with the faster pace uh, the polyester strings that allow players to hit with such velocity and the balls keep dipping in over and over again uh, with with poly strings powerful rackets and so on with the way the game is changing the one-handed backhand is not seen that much anymore i don't think there are many uh, serious coaches who teach their students the one-handed backhand which is a shame I think it could still be done obviously uh, but the double-handed backhand is what you see in uh, I would say 90-10 majority if you go back to the era of Borg and McEnroe most players had one-handed backhands like with the wooden racket and the way they played uh, they didn't use as much topspin a lot of slice get to the net of course tennis was played differently and then it's been a transitioning period over to more and more double-handed backhands. I mean, Borg popularized the double-handed backhand in one way and had that element of topspin where he could really add some spin even with the small wooden rackets and uh, the gut strings they used. So that was the start and then it's been just been going, going and going. And now you're not seeing many one-handed backhands. And when you do, you feel like it's uh, it's the more aesthetically pleasing shot. You could argue I would maybe uh, take some fantastic double-handed backhands and and say that they can match like, you know, Marat Safin or David Nalbandian to, to name two. But I think many would argue it's the more aesthetically pleasing shot. But is it able to compete in efficiency in that you can be closer to the ball with the double-handed? It's easier to defend with the double-hander. And there are other things. So I would be keen to hear from you coaches and so on. Would you uh, get all your junior players uh, or, or even younger players to play with two hands? And uh, I'm keen to hear. I know many of you uh, rec players, amateurs, club players, competitive rec players play with one-handed backhand. I do struggle with the one-handed backhand from time to time, but I love hitting it when it works well. And I feel very unnatural hitting the double-handed backhand. I also was a Fed fan. You can see the poster in the back. And you want to play elegant tennis, but sometimes maybe it's not the most efficient or most successful in terms of uh, competition and points. Um, that, that's the way to play. I'm going to comment a bit on the racket since uh, a lot of you are interested. We have Tsitsipas still within the top 10, the remaining top 10 player that has a one-handed backhand. I mean, Dimitrov, the way he's playing this year, might pop into the top 10. Uh, deserved in that case. He's been there before, if I'm not uh, misremembering that. 
So Sitsipas 10 now been falling out of the rank, he's not found his form, plays with the Blade 98, Pro Stock 1820. Uh, Dimitrov has his Pro Staff RF 97. That's the layup I've heard. I'm not 100% sure. 1818 or 1870 string pattern. He seems to go back and forth with 4G and gut strings. Uh, we have Musetti, the flamboyant player. And sometimes you can see that these are like more elegant players. The way they play is a little bit more for the gallery, for the audience. Uh, Musetti is one of those guys. It looks good when he plays, but he's struggling to win matches that kind of match his talent, I would say. Uh, I would say the same for Shapo. Uh, you have Eubanks with the T-Fight, Technifiber T-Fight. Daniel Evans with the Wilson 6195. Uh, uses the slice a lot. It works really well for him. Daniel Altmaier, 53 in the world. Beautiful one-handed backhand, the ESO 98. One guy to really watch. He's a big fan of Stan the Man, which we will get to. And Dusan Lajovic, a Serbian player, who plays really well on clay with a 6195 and a one-handed backhand. So it's interesting to see that he his style works better on clay even though in your head you would think maybe a one-handed backhand with small head size racket would work better on uh, faster surfaces but it also depends on your style you can also take that example with Stefano Tsitsipas who's, who's very good on clay clay is where he's the best and grass is probably where he's at, at his worst uh, Vavrinka now at sixth in the world still going strong we like to see Stan the man he's struggling to string together a lot of wins these days but he's still playing at a high level of course Christopher O'Connell I missed that guy when I did did my list he's now 67 in the world we have Dominic Team, who's who said that if he's not performing to what he thinks he can perform at that level this year he might consider retirement and I hope he doesn't because we know he can play good tennis uh, he's it's taking him a longer time than I think most people imagined to get back to uh, to the top 100 but now he's there I think he can keep progressing hopefully his results will come Domi plays with the pure strike 98 as well a lot of 98s here then we have Kovacevic, don't know so much about, about him. Uh, 102 in the world, we have Shapovalov, 127. Also struggling a bit now, like Domi, to string along wins. Uh, we'll see if that happens uh, in the future. Um, we know the talent is there, but then the head needs to come. And then after an injury, you can also have some body uh, issues in terms of like, lingering pain or something that we don't know about. Gaske, still going, maybe not strong, but he's still going. Uh, he can make some runs. We've seen that on the ATP Tour in the lower events, ATP 250s. 130 in the world. And then PR here mentioned also Corentin Mota, but Mota was a double-handed backhand player, then had wrist issues, switched to slicing 95% of his backhand shots, and sometimes hit over the ball with one hand. And we'll see what happens if he's uh, coming back. I mean, for a while he was just doing a lot of uh, underhand serves as well. So this guy is trying things, which we really like. WTA players, uh, this is uh, where I missed a few, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Tatiana Maria, 50 player in the world, that's the highest ranked 100 backhand player. Some of my favorite players historically on the WTA tour side. Steffi Graf, of course, with the slice and not so much coming over the ball. Henin Hardan, probably my favorite player. Uh, I actually had a racket in uh, Nikki's office a, a while back, so there's a video about that on the channel. We also had uh, Amelie Morismo, for example, nice one-handed backhand, Francesca Schiavone. So there have been players, but I think there are fewer now than they were in the past. Uh, Diane Parry, I have mentioned, the French player. Victoria Golubic, I forgot about her when I mentioned this article. Jessica Ponchet, I, I didn't know about 127. And then he even mentioned players outside the top 150. So it was a great comment. I love when we have comments that add detail and stuff like that so the one hand backhand is still there one other topic is obviously like is there a racket that suits a one-handed backhand player and uh, i mentioned before that i think most one-handed backhand players that i know play with smaller head sizes because this motions like kind of feels more easy more natural more flowing with a smaller head size but I, it's it's a matter of taste like i mean gasquet uses a 100 square inch extended racket he has arguably one of the best backhands of all time, at least one-handed backhands. So there's definitely room to have a bigger head size. Uh, that's fine. Depends on your, what you like, your style. You get a bit more forgiveness with the bigger head size. So if you hit a little bit off center on many shots, the 100 might help, for example. I don't think there's like a, like a set racket for the one-hander. It depends a little bit on what you like. But, but most players would argue that 98, 95 is a bit easier to swing through than the 100. That's at least what, what I heard. I can hit a bad one-handed backhand with any racket, really, but I would love to hit a good good one. <laughs> so, 
Uh, it, it's a work in progress, of course, your, your strokes and your technique. But it's a beautiful shot. I, I don't want to see it go away. I think tennis needs its contrasts. It needs its different surfaces, playing styles. It needs diversity. We love tennis because you have matches on a slow clay court where one player is more of a net aggressive player and the other guy loves playing on clay. And then you have the opposite on a grass court where the clay quarter cannot really play his game. What we've seen in tennis is that the surfaces are becoming more and more even in terms of pace and bounce and all that. And uh, I guess that's good for the players, maybe for the level of play, but it makes for a little bit less interesting of a sport because you do want a varied experience as a fan. You want to be able to to follow the tour and, and see these, these players work well with this type of surface or this type of pace or these matchups are more interesting. So the diversity there, the contrasting styles, the contrasting surface, that's what we want to see as tennis fans or tennis nerds. And uh, I really wish that tennis stays like that and doesn't become too much of a homogenous uh, Starbucks everywhere kind of sport because uh, then I think it will lose a lot of interest, uh, which it might already have. I don't know. I think tennis seems to be doing fine. And although they might need to make the balls the same, I think the contrasting styles and surfaces and everything that makes tennis such a beautiful sport remains and uh, finds a way to, uh, to be strong in this sport that we all love. Some musings on the one-handed backhand. Let me know, are you a double-hander, one-handed backhand player? What do you think of the one-handed backhand? Does it have a place in the sport in 10, 15 years? Or do you think it would be more or less extinct? That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out TennisNerd.net for more musings, more articles, more predictions and everything tennis. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a member or joining patreon.com slash tennisnerd. That's it for now. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.